Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the City of St. John's first virtual town hall on community and economic recovery. Uh, I'm hoping everybody can hear me. Phil, uh, I can see you. Can you give me a thumbs up if you can hear me? Okay, perfect. Uh, so we want to welcome everybody on this uh, virtual town hall. Uh, the topic today is municipal economic and community recovery. I'm sure as everybody is aware, uh, COVID-19 has been impacting the entire world and uh, it's been impacting our community as well. And so that's what we want to talk about today is how can we recover as a community? And uh, this is sort of our first foray as a municipality into a virtual setting. We've hosted lots of town halls in the past, uh, but this is the first time doing one digitally. So uh, we're using WebEx. Some of you may or may not be familiar with using WebEx, um, but anyway, we're, we're going to go through it. and. Uh, we uh, we thank you for joining us. We ask for your patience with us as well. This is new to us. Uh, so if things don't go exactly smoothly with the presentation or, or what have you, just please bear with us. So uh, I'm gonna move through the presentation and talk about how to use some of the tools in WebEx to now engage with our great panelists later today. So, so for participant engagement, we have a couple of opportunities and avenues for this. So the first one is polls. So uh, what I'm gonna do right now is I'm just gonna launch a, a really quick poll. Um, you're gonna see it on the right-hand side of your screen. So you should see it over there. Uh, the question is, have you gotten a haircut since the pandemic started? So we'll just give that a minute uh, to answer. Um, if it's not obvious to anyone, I. Uh, I haven't gotten a haircut <laughs> since the pandemic started. So uh, that'll be uh, one of the things I look forward to. Okay, so I'm just gonna close the poll early because it looks like everybody everybody answered. Um, so now we'll see what you guys all said. So you should see uh, the results. So it looks like 44% of you are in the same camp that I am. Um, 28% have been bold enough to do it themselves or had a family member do it. 22% um, are saying they did get it professionally cut. And 6% uh, of you are uh, are not saying because uh, your camera's <laughs> off. So so thanks everybody for, uh, for doing that. All right, so the other uh, options for engagement today um, is the Q&A feature. So we're going to show you right now how to do the Q&A feature. Really, really intuitive to use. Um, so on the bottom of your screen, you're going to see these icons. And then uh, the one you want to look at is the one with three dots. So if you were to click on that, there'll be a little pop-up that shows up. Um, and then you want to select Q&A. And so then on the right-hand side of the screen, in the same part where there was polling, um, there'll be an option for you to ask Q&A. And you're welcome to send your questions in all throughout the virtual town hall. Uh, again, uh, the focus today is on community recovery. And so we're gonna have all sorts of chance for you to engage directly with the panelists. We're gonna have questions for you. We're gonna have some more polls uh, for you today. In fact, uh, I'm gonna launch another one right now. So uh, St. John is famous as a city of first. So we're gonna try some of the historians in the crowd. Which one of these is not a St. John first? This is a little tricky. <clears throat> so when as you're doing that, um, the last way for engagement is something called raising your hand. So in order to raise your hand, you would select the participant button at the bottom of the screen. On the side of your panel, on the right-hand side, you're going to see a list of participants, which will be um, yourself and the panelists. Um, and then you click the raise hand button. It's a tiny little button, you might miss it. So you would click on that. And basically the raise hand button is what uh, we're gonna ask you to use if you wanna say something. Um, we ask that you keep your hand lowered uh, unless you do wanna say something. There'll be an opportunity later in the call for you to actually, we'll, we'll be soliciting some feedback from you, asking your opinions. Um, we'll actually be, be able to share the floor. So obviously most of what, Everybody sharing will come in uh, through typing, either on your phone or on your tablet or a PC. Um, and so type on those questions on Q&A, but 
Um, if you, we also may call on you to speak to your idea. So we're going to be asking some ideas from you here shortly. Um, and uh, we want you to feel comfortable to do that. Uh, there's no pressure. You don't have to speak publicly if you don't want to, but bear in mind, this is a public meeting and it is being recorded. Um, for any dial in participants, which I don't think we have any right now, I think everybody is able to participate so far, but we'll come back to that. Uh, if we do have any dial in participants, so we let's... have two. we have two, David, we do have two. Okay. So dial in participants, uh, if you want to raise your hand as well, um, apparently, and admittedly, we haven't tested this, so you'll have to bear with us. If this doesn't work, uh, you can open star three on your phone and that will, that will raise your hand. Um, so, and then the final thing at any point as well, uh, during the call, you can also email feedback at sanction.ca and we're monitoring that inbox during the virtual town hall. So uh, I'll share with you the results <coughs> of uh, St. John firsts. So would you believe that we did not have the first newspaper in Canada? Um, Mayor Darling, I'm, I'm gonna pick on you. Do you happen to know who had the first newspaper in Canada? I don't know, but I thought I actually got my, I picked, we did not have the first newspaper and then I second guessed myself and tried to change my answer. So <laughs> I don't know. I don't know who had the first. No, David. So uh, I think it was the, uh, the, the Halifax Gazette. Oh, wow. So they beat us, but we have way more first than Halifax. Absolutely. So. Well, it's, it's okay to give them something Poor Halifax. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Yes. Okay. So uh, we're going to keep moving along. Um, Again, when it's your turn to speak, uh, if you could just raise your hand, if you haven't asked a Q&A question, we'll call upon you to speak. Uh, we just have all the phones muted right now, just so that it's a little bit easier to manage. We're, we're not sure exactly how many folks are gonna turn up on the call. I think right now there's uh, 26 of us from different businesses throughout the city on the call. And uh, so this is the format that we're using. So the first question, the real question that we have today uh, and we'd like you to, to answer this one. We're gonna come back to this later. I'm gonna give you five minutes to, to answer this one uh, just as we turn this over to the mayor. Um, how can the city help drive sort of additional people um, to sort of our commercial zones while respecting mandatory orders of social distancing? So we'd like your ideas. Please feel free to type those out. Try to keep your answers brief so we can review them quickly. Um, anyway, we're gonna keep moving along. I'll leave that in the background. And so I'm going to turn it over to uh, a man who needs no introduction, who is um, maybe outshined in fame by his own dog, and is a relatively new resident of Uptown St. John. So I'll give the floor now to uh, our mayor, Mary Darling. Okay, well, good morning. Good morning. Thank you very much, David. Thank you, everyone, for taking time from your busy schedule to come and uh, and have this important conversation with us this morning. First, I want to just acknowledge uh, 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 you know, March 18th, I think, is when we really started to lock down and 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 uh, and start to deal with this uh, public health crisis, this economic uh, crisis. Obviously, we're still working through uh, the details, but March 18th, I don't know about yourself, but it feels like that was two years ago uh, to me. So we first want to acknowledge to each and every one of you uh, on this call today, you're likely here because you've been impacted. We've all been impacted to varying degrees and we want uh, to recover. Uh, we have an amazing city that's kind and generous and uh, uh, we, we had lots of momentum and we wanna get that momentum back. So I just wanna say thank you for taking some time this morning uh, to come out with us uh, and chat with us. Um, the next slide, please, David. So really what we're here to discuss with you today is we're, we're here to discuss how best our community can recover from COVID-19 and what the city can do to support that. And, you know, the municipal, we've had great debates about this over the last month or so. You know, the municipality plays a role, the province plays a role, the federal government play roles. Uh, as well. And I just want to acknowledge the amazing work that's been uh, happening from uh, uh, the, the Chamber, Uptown St. John, Economic Development Greater St. John, Discover St. John. Uh, there's been new groups like Rise Up St. John, uh, many other organizations. I don't want to forget anybody, uh, entrepreneurs that have pivoted and innovated uh, to, uh, to respond to these new challenges that uh, perhaps we couldn't even have imagined uh, five months ago. So, 
Um, the second thing we're here to do is we're here to listen to your feedback and ideas on initiatives that we uh, can promote, that can promote community, excuse me, and our economic recovery. Uh, so we're here and we need that feedback from you. And, and lastly, we want to discuss our open street survey that we just finished uh, last week uh, and obtain your feedback from uh, from from that, the concept of open streets and play streets, and we're gonna we're gonna walk you through that, and and we'd like to get your your feedback there as well. Um, next slide, please. When we look at um, from a municipal perspective, uh, we we looked at how could we play a role. It's not a, a necessarily a, jet, a, a direct injection of uh, uh, you know folks have said, well, help us with our rents or help us with certainly have said that to me that's not a typical role for a municipal level of government but we focused on what can we do so i'm going to go to the bottom the last bullet on this slide first is that we have put away over the last uh, uh three or four years a series of what i call rainy day funds uh we've never had them before and in particular around growth uh we have a growth reserve so what we've said is that we have an availability of up to five hundred and fifty thousand dollars from our growth reserve to uh to enable and accelerate local economic and community activity in response to the current public health and economic crisis uh, we want to focus on what can be facilitated or delivered by the city of st john understanding that there are other groups and organizations also uh, um, uh, uh, taking steps we want to ensure engagement with community partners like you today we want to reaffirm uh, St. John's civic pride and community ownership, and I'm looking forward to hearing your feedback on how do we restore that. Uh, I'll just admit to you that um, uh, in the midst of all this, uh, I was even feeling anxious going to the grocery store, for example. How do we restore people's confidence to come back out to uh, the events, to the restaurants, to the shops? Uh, uh, other different initiatives over time, depending on the level of social distancing required, of, of course, we'll always have to meet the state of emergency requirements. And again, I jump to the, the punchline is that we do have up to $550,000 that we would walk down through uh, criteria. And I think I have one more slide, David. Yeah. So uh, again, we can't do this alone. We're all in this together. And I've mentioned some of the organizations and I probably forgot a few, but one of the things that St. John does so incredibly well is it's very innovative. Uh, and we we have uh, folks that punch well above their weight class. We've all pivoted in, in how we operate and do business in the last number of months. And now we wanna recover and thrive. And I think about that now, not going back to normal, but, but actually being better than normal economically, socially, and culturally and I understand that that's going to be, you know, it's going to take some work. So we're in this together. We want to drive volumes and customers to those impacted organizations and businesses. We want to har harness innovation and in program delivery. We want to focus on delivering at least one new initiative every month. And I'll close with this uh, and say, you know, what I've said to Phil and David and our city manager is let's get as much consensus as we can and let's act. You know, let's act faster uh, than, than we have in the past. Um, and and we're not going to get it all right. Uh, there could be some failures. Uh, we want to minimize those, but let's take some action. Let's try some things. And, uh, and uh, the next week or the next month, let's make it even better again and try something new. So with that, I'll stop and say thank you very much and look forward to today's conversation. Thanks, Mayor Darling. Uh, we're going to circle back with you uh, in a little bit. Um, and again, thanks for all the attendees so far for sharing your feedback and your comments. Those are coming in. Um, David DePlessia from the Chamber has sent us a comment that uh, apparently St. John had the first penny newspaper. So I think we have a, a fight on our hands with Halifax, for sure. So again, thanks, Your Worship. Uh, next up, we have uh, one of my colleagues at the City of St. John, uh, Phil Wallet. Phil is our Deputy Commissioner of Growth and Community Planning. He's also the, uh, the Chair of our Internal Economic and Community Recovery committee and uh, he'll be sharing with you at least in this next presentation some of the recovery initiatives that the city is already undertaking to give you a backup or background on that and then he wants to discuss some of the potential initiatives and that's again another opportunity that we're looking for some of your feedback and we'll be engaging with you shortly so phil i'll turn it over to you great thank you david and um welcome everybody 
Um, we have already started, evidently, uh, to proceed with some recovery programming for the city. And as the, the mayor indicated, what we're really looking at is, you know, how can we transform, alter, introduce programming, uh, uh, adaptations to our infrastructure, and our investments, um, to, to support and accelerate economic and community recovery. And I do want to mention that um, we intentionally placed economic and community together. Um, you know, absolutely, the, the primary objective here is to drive volume in these commercial nodes of the city, where there is a pronounced uh, number of businesses who have been uh, impacted severely by uh, COVID-19. And uh, we've done that interlay. So we know where those locations are and you could, you could imagine where they are across the city. And they're not just in the uptown, uh, they're across the city. And um, so that's, that's what we've got to think about uh, in how we drive volume. However, the other component of it is also the community side. And I think they play uh, hand in hand in that uh, we can do this at the same time. We can kind of bring people together make ourselves feel like a community again, uh, get people comfortable interacting uh, uh, while respecting social distancing and the mandatory orders, all while uh, you know stimulating some of that consumer spending and uh, accelerate that business recovery that uh, all of you are, are certainly interested in. So here are some of the initiatives. I'm not gonna take too much time in this. Uh, David, you can uh, change the slide. Um, we uh, we had a night market last uh, last year, and it did draw quite a bit of people into uh, the uptown for it. It was also an alternative uh, venue for the the daily uh, market tenants, but also some new ones as well. So it brought a little bit of a vibrancy on a Thursday night, which uh, which uh, kind of an introduction to the rest of the week uh, weekend. Um, so we thought that was very successful, and we will be launching that uh, next week on uh, the eighteenth. Um, one uh, that uh, you know I'm certainly proud of uh, from a, a, not just a municipal uh, a municipality standpoint, but from a community perspective more generally is you know we give out grants every year, and those grant recipients uh, at the start of the year when COVID-19 happened, they'd already received their grants, and many of them said, "I'm deferring. I'm not going to do it this year. It's too complicated." And uh, you know I don't know how many grants there are, but I think there's over about 50 in total if you take arts and community grants. And um, uh, what we're seeing now is that they're innovating. They're coming back and saying, no, 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 I'm going to do it this year. I have a plan. And uh, they're adapting their, their initiatives. They're trying to integrate it. And, that, and those in itself will be great animation for uh, our, our, our commercial districts. Um, uh, some of them are not in our commercial districts, but it's also an opportunity uh, to, to not give up on uh, arts and, and neighborhood-based uh, development for, for the year. Next one. Uh, this is one that we just announced this past uh, um, Monday, and uh, David was able to find uh, an example of it in, uh, in Florida. But uh, essentially, we're going to take uh, local art, we're going to figure out a way to get it onto uh, picnic tables, and uh, we're going to have a traveling picnic table uh, initiative. And uh, these picnic tables will show up at different locations, different pop-up locations across the city, uh, in our parks, and certainly our commercial districts. And uh, we hope that it generates an enthusiasm and an interest uh, in the community. Uh, the logic here is that, you know, we understand that for many of the restaurants, um, takeout service is still uh, a big part of the business, although not exclusively. I think that is transitioning, if I understand it right. Uh, and uh, it's for people to take that, th those, th those meals uh, and uh, to enjoy it uh, in a picnic style somewhere if uh, they're not inclined to eat inside. Uh, so uh, more to come on that as we uh, progress through that project. Next one. Um, we uh, we have heard kind of loud and clear for those folks involved in, in, in street closures. So what I mean by that is community initiated street closures. So um, folks on the line certainly have thought about street closures and have tried to, to, to do street closures. And it's not uh, it's not an easy process. You've got to you've got to have a, a, a public safety plan for police, uh, for fire. Now you have to need one for COVID-19. You've got to you've got to determine uh, whether there's alcohol being served. There's a lot of of, of navigating for that and the city of St. John is going to launch and uh, is actively involved in simplifying that process for those citizens, those businesses that are interested in a temporary closure of a street. 
Uh, this is separate than a, than a patio permit, which has an existing process, as well as a permanent closure of a street, which has an existing process. This would be for event-based uh, programming. And uh, we want to simplify that. We think it is a good thing. People do show up for that. And we think it, we can do it this year while, uh, while respecting social uh, distancing. Um, we uh, have announced a, a new pop-up park right now. I walked, uh, I walked by it this morning and uh, there is uh, quite a bit of grass. There is a fence around it. So these are steps that uh, are to come. It's essentially a locked off uh, rectangular grass area. It, it is owned by the province, but the province has given us the, the thumbs up to use it. So uh, we will be animating that site and uh, we think it's a, it's a great location to bring people in. And again, to facilitate this idea to bring people into these uh, commercial districts, uh, you know, grab, uh, grab a nice meal, uh, uh, go, go have a picnic uh, with your family or your friends and uh, read a book, whatever it might be. And, uh, you know, that particular location is a pretty nice one as well, right beside Loyalist Plaza. So we really look forward to animating that. Uh, we've restored our development incentive uh, program, which includes the beautification grant as well as the heritage grants. Those were held off as a result of the COVID-19 financial impact to the budget. So uh, that's great. Uh, several uh, residents take advantage of that and uh, it does leverage you know, private uh, investment into uh, homes and the beautification of our of our city. So those are back on track and we look forward to supporting those development opportunities this year. Um, so um, is this the same one, David, or is this a separate one? This is inviting applications for street closures. Well, you sort of you mentioned sort of both. One is the the new internal process for street closures. I see. Yes. And yes. then this one is inviting community. Yeah, so the one uh, I think I spoke to this one earlier, but this one, uh, the one that I would have talked about earlier is that we we did launch a whole bunch of uh, uh, we launched a survey and this town hall is certainly part of that as well to get feedback on more city initiated street closures. So I've already talked about the community led street closures, but above and beyond that the city is uh, is interested in what it can do and it can initiate in terms of its own street closures, uh, not uh, not being facilitated by a uh, business or the community. So uh, you will be hearing more about that at the end of this presentation. And Phil, I just qualify that picture that that is a uh, stock picture, not a not a current. We would not meet the state of emergency with that picture. So I just didn't want anyone to think. Uh, Good, uh, good point. Uh, that's one thing that uh, we've uh, we've tried to navigate with some of these photos is how do you illustrate an open street or a different type of street while respecting mandatory orders? Uh, we don't have a lot of those stock photos available, but uh, good point, um, uh, Mayor Darling. Okay. Uh, so one thing that uh, some of you may be aware, we uh, we had an RFP out, and uh, we are actively kind of finalizing uh, the successful bid for that. And uh, the idea is to have a shipping container beer garden raid in Loyalist Plaza. And uh, that will be quite exciting. Um, and uh, I don't think it will look exactly like this, but uh, there is a plan to, uh, to have that installed in that location. Uh, and we look forward to it. Uh, we also were able to uh, leverage some uh, funds from the Federation of Canadian Municipalities for uh, vulnerable populations in St. John, and uh, we were eligible for it. So we did. Uh, we were able to leverage twenty-two thousand extra dollars for that, and uh, those funds will be going uh, towards those um, with um, 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 in our community uh, that are uh, that are vulnerable. I don't know the exact. Uh, I can bring that back later on and what. Uh, what the funds are going to be used for. I believe it's for mental health uh, and, uh, and those that are homeless. Okay, so uh, that was that piece. Um, now we're going on to what's next and uh, we will be asking you a question related to these. So we, uh, we had indicated um, to council as a staff that we wanted to do one initiative a month. Uh, we now are juggling nine. So uh, they said that wasn't enough. We need to do more. And the next round of ideas, among others, um, which uh, we'll collect today, uh, as well as we've collected uh, over 500 ideas through the survey uh, that was uh, closed this past Sunday. But the eight ones that are currently being considered now are these, and I'll very quickly go through them, and then uh, we will ask your feedback on which ones uh, you like uh, and which ones are maybe not, shouldn't rise to the top. So one is, Using some of that $550,000, I don't know how much at this stage, but to, to use it to basically support uh, businesses, 
um, uh, uh, community groups, uh, groups of individuals who come together who want to animate space in our commercial district. So this could be uh, uh, an art event, it could be uh, uh, um, uh, a special a program, and um, and they need some support to do it. And these would be small grants. I think it would be you know a below ten thousand dollars type of thing, and uh, we could put a program together. We could uh, you know uh, call for proposals. And then we do an evaluation, we'd submit it. One of the things we worry about is that uh, there's not enough animation uh, occurring in our commercial districts to bring that volume in. And while the city can close a street, uh, a street that is empty with no cars on it uh, is not necessarily an attractive thing always for people. So we need to find things to do on those streets uh, in order to bring that uh, in and to keep those, those people there and then to translate that into consumer spending. Uh, neighborhood yard sales. So this would be the idea that you could basically do this kind of a rolling uh, yard sales across the city in our neighborhoods and profile our neighborhoods a little bit and uh, get communities to kind of go out. I think uh, there's some history of this in the valley that they've done this before, but we could do this across our city and it would be facilitated by the, the, the city in some regard. Uh, obviously, we wouldn't be doing all the yard sailing. We would just uh, encourage it to happen and facilitate it. Uh, Pop-up drive-in theater. So I've heard a lot about this. Uh, there's a, uh, I know Discover St. John is uh, is uh, looking looking at this among others, and uh, this would be the idea of uh, finding a parking lot uh, somewhere in the city uh, that we could kind of allow people to drive in and uh, watch a movie and then take off. Uh, mo movies or music in municipal facilities or the parks are, is another opportunity, and um, we. Uh, we don't have much more on that for now, but that's uh, that's the idea. Uh, we could also look into a more tailored development incentive program. This would probably be later in the year, and uh, we would adapt it to what are the current needs of um, citizens looking to develop their uh, their homes or restore their homes or upgrade their homes and uh, what locations are needed. Uh, the other one would be to uh, leverage additional federal and provincial stimulus funding to unlock those three catalytic projects that the city is currently pursuing, the school, the Central Peninsula, the Fund a Key site, as well as the interchange project um, on, uh, on the east side. Uh, one that uh, there's been a little bit of enthusiasm among staff is a block party startup kit. So uh, I don't know exactly what would be part of that, but you would uh, facilitate the ability of uh, neighborhoods to come together, create a, a block party. We would give them a kit to help facilitate that. Uh, and, uh, you know, whether street closures are part of that or not, that's unclear. Uh, but that's the idea. And then the last one is a traveling stage. So essentially some sort of capacity to bring music or performance to different locations across the city. So we call it kind of a pop-up stage and uh, bring it to different locations uh, to allow for small gatherings uh, to, uh, to enjoy that stage. Again, probably something that would happen a little bit later in the year, uh, but uh, something we're looking at. So um, that's it for that. And I think David, we're gonna launch a poll if I'm not mistaken. There it is. So uh, on your uh, on the poll question, essentially you can select as many as you like. If you don't like any of them, uh, you uh, you don't have to vote. And um, and uh, we just want to see you know which ones should we be maybe focusing on a little bit more before we uh, we dive into this as a as a staff. While people wait, Mayor Darling, is there a, a favorite that you have amongst those or? <laughs> yeah, I guess, Phil, as I'm absorbing, as I'm absorbing this, um, I mean, certainly, I think it's a combination for me of restoring confidence for folks uh, to, you know, we know that small, medium sized businesses of all sizes, but the small, medium sized businesses that I'm chatting with, um, it's how do we get people back in the seats, back in the stores, uh, shopping again? uh and and uh so i think it's it's though that that area of focus and uh you know at the same time we always have to be working on the on the bigger picture there's an awful lot going on obviously in city hall right now with restructuring and those types so we somehow have to uh you know to get some of these initiatives out um uh, out of the gate and i'm i'm looking forward phil uh, i mean there's some incredibly creative uh, Glenn has shared already two or three ideas. Uh, Judith Mackin, I believe, is on the call. Um, uh, there's a few others. I mean, there's many, many people here. I like to get to the stage here near the end where we hear from the 
these amazing innovators that we have and what what else can we do you know meet meet council's criteria so we're not seen to be uh you know taking taxpayers money and using it in an inappropriate way but how do we invest and and supercharge some of the ideas that some of the innovators on this call might have great okay um so it looks like we have uh, all the results and I'm going to make those go live right now. So uh, they're not sorted, but you can see there seems to be uh, quite a bit of resonance with sort of a new grant program, um, pop-up or drive-in theater, uh, movies uh, in the park. So obviously there's uh, some interesting perspectives there. 31% of people didn't have sort of any feedback per se, which is okay as well. Um, so what we want to do right now, and we're going to take all, all these comments back to us and back to our recovery team as well. Um, we want to start moving on to your comments and your questions and your feedback. So uh, just as a reminder, uh, raising your hand, we talked about this earlier. Just select the participant button if you want to raise a hand. Um, the little button on the right hand side of the screen looks like a hand It's the button you click and uh, little white hand will show up next to your name if your hand is raised. So that'll just uh, give the panelists an idea of who wants to speak on something. Um, so what we want to do right now is we want to circle back uh, to that first question, the first sort of real question we asked, not the haircut question. Uh, but the first question, how can the city help drive additional people traffic while respecting mandatory orders, uh, social distancing to our commercial districts? So we got a number of pieces of feedback here. Uh, and if it's okay with folks, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna call out some folks just to share with some of some of their ideas. I know the mayor just mentioned Glenn Hicks. Glenn Hicks is a friend of uh, our department in City Hall for certain with the U Station. Um, Glenn, I'm wondering if you could comment on your idea, which was highlighting activities that we have available for walking, biking, sightseeing, focusing on our waterfront, uh, and then marketing all the events that we can do safely. So, um, Glenn, any any comments on that? I've unmuted you if you're willing to speak. If you don't want to speak. You don't have to speak and I'll turn you off in a second. No, can you can you hear me okay? We can hear you. Okay, perfect. Yeah, I think um, I've also said a few comments uh, as you've gone through um, about uh, the, the movie theater and the pop-up. Like the key thing here is getting people in the city. That's, I think, and then the rest of it kind of takes care of itself in terms of, uh, um, you know, businesses, access businesses can kind of take care of the rest, but getting people in the city on a regular basis is, is really key so so any and, and the two big reasons um there's a lot of other ones but two big reasons is kind of work and sports events that bring people out from outside the city in and those are kind of lost to us for for some time people are still going to continue to work from home and and offices are only opening slowly and um the same with uh, sports fields and, and and organized sports so anything else that we can do with respecting uh, all the protocols and 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 social distancing and so on that bring people in the city is key. So I love the I love the the um, pop up park because um, that's a great uh, attraction to for walkability in the city. Our Harbor Passage, so anything that gets people into one to either bike or walk the city. Um, the 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 movie theater is a a, a great idea. Um, drive in because they're going to bring people in carloads. They have social distancing while they're watching the movie, um, but yet they've got to, you know, if they come early, they can go restaurants and then kind of disperse. So anything that really highlights that, you know, not other than than uh, coming into the office every day or or coming in for organized sports that drives people in the city is is um, would be would certainly get my vote for uh, for uh, ideas. Great, thanks a lot, Glenn. And we're probably going to come back to you a little bit later on some of your other ideas. Uh, we've got we've got all those as well. And again, for all everyone else participating in the line, please uh, please continue to send in your questions and your comments. We're going to come to you, um, Mayor Darling. Want to respond uh, to what we just heard there? I know the city is just 
uh, done some things even this past week in terms of opening up some of our sports fields, but Glenn's got a, a lot of great ideas there. I'll turn the floor over to you first. Yeah, a couple of quick comments here. So we are, um, and I'm just going to go back. I think, uh, Glenn, you also posted um, a question around, uh, uh, you know, when can we have bigger crowds? When, I mean, that is that is evolving. We're, we're uh, um, watching uh, the provincial newscasts. We're speaking. We were speaking to the province multiple times a day. Um, you know, a little less frequently now, but obviously, as we continue to perform, uh, then then the the province and the you know the chief medical uh, officer of health will feel more confident in allowing uh, bigger crowds. You know, we've we've uh, obviously had a setback uh, in the north uh, of the province, and and uh, obviously um, getting that back under control again. Uh, I know the conversations are happening around what is that next stage and how big could those crowds get to and i you know i think we you know we should match our own planning around uh around those those next phases and those next stages um yeah we're trying to open back up as 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 many and as much um, um uh, uh, sort of public services as as we uh, as we can both from uh you know the emergency order and and just the reality is we're dealing with some uh, some economic challenges as well that we're uh, we're trying to work through uh, and i'd end with this uh, you know everyone on this call uh, can help us shape uh, and reshape uh, the city and that's what i believe um, i believe we need to, to do over the last four years and uh, i think we're setting the stage for that under our three pillars of growth and getting our finances in order and uh, and these provincial reforms that we need but the more feedback we get from you as leaders in the community as to how you see your community moving forward um uh, we have 166 million dollars to spend and um and um you know how we spend that to have the the uh, a region and a city that thrives moving forward is a conversation for today but also uh you know next week and the week after that and the week after that so thank you Thanks, very darling. Uh, Phil, I just want to turn it over to you for follow up. Um, Glenn had a really interesting point about um, sort of the catalytic uh, change that can happen with really doing work on the waterfront. And I know Fundy Key has been front and center. We're talking about working more closely with the port. Can you share maybe some of what's going on with how we can get more access to the waterfront to the general public? Yeah, no, certainly, uh, certainly some of the visioning of the existing programming that we announce is for that. Um, you know, one of the, the things that I was uh, uh, on Glenn's comment and among others, and uh, you should know this, is that I guess no idea is bad at this stage because at some point those restrictions will be lightened. So, you know, if somebody has an idea for a concert, uh, for example, and, and right now concerts aren't really kind of in the mix, uh, as I know it, uh, but it will be one day and we can start working on it today so that's another piece of this we have a lot of things that we're thinking about today and what can we do right now and we know that there's a need right now so that's our focus however if you have an idea but you suspect that it will not pass the the sniff test in terms of uh, allowing for social distancing it's actually okay because i would rather start working on it now what what i don't want our community to do is basically wait until somebody says you can have a gathering of 100 people to start thinking about doing a, pro a program for 100 people we should be doing it now and i know many of you on the line are already there they're already doing that so i think uh, that's an opportunity for us is any idea at this stage is good we'll put it into that sequence and uh, once we are at uh, that phase of of allowance of 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 social uh What's, a what's the opposite of social distancing, I guess, uh, social mm -hmm. closeness, <laughs> uh, <laughs> we, we will be ready and we will have those programs available. So uh, I do think that the idea of bringing people to these commercial nodes are very, very important. Uh, we have thought about what are the links between them? So this is where you get into this active transportation. So instead of looking at street closures in terms of patios or events in commercial di districts, we've also thought about it in terms of what if we try to link up the west side and the south end a little bit more tangibly through street closures so that people can kind of bike walk run between those and it could become this new kind of active wellness uh corridor and um is that an attraction so no i don't know i don't know the answer to that but certainly is a is a way that we can uh, entice more people to be in, in a particular location where uh consumer spending can happen um so Glenn, I just want to come back to you. 
uh, just as for follow-up, do you have uh, sort of a comment or any questions just about what you just heard the mayor or Phil make? And I've unmuted yeah. you if you, you do. Yeah, just uh, be brief. It's just more of a, 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 an idea is remember our, our city is a big city. So it doesn't have to be, the things don't have to be concentrated events. I, I picked on the, um, the drive-in because that can be a concentrated event because you have everybody in cars. But like the, the night market, for example, if we could have a night market that's not just in one alley, but all over the city, and we'll map to each of the, the stalls. You could have, you don't have to have a concert in the park, you could have concerts in the city and have little, you know, little mini concerts in five locations, uh, 10 locations all over the city. And I think that social distancing sort of doesn't take care of itself. You'd have to put some, you know, some signage and things like that, but you have a lot more opportunity to to deal with the social distancing and get to see more of the city. So um, anyway, it's just a, it's a kind of a, a, an idea as to how to how to do it without, you know, the um, traditional kind of concentration um, focus, do it in the dispersed focus and use all the great areas and nooks and crannies of our of our of our city. I think that's really important, uh, Glenn. Thank you. <clears throat> um, you know, we know how important the uptown is. It's you know, it's the hub. Uh, it, it, folks travel here from all over the region for you know for eating, shopping, culture, all those things. But we we also have to recognize that uh, you know th those types of events can be and you know there's there's already I'm thinking of uh, you know music in the park at Shanex and Milledgeville. I'm thinking of Seaside Park on the west side. You know, those are not expensive events. You can space out, uh, you can physically distance, and they bring a lot of joy for for not a lot of money. So, you know, maybe that goes fill into that small grants, um, you know, a different kind of small grants program or something. Uh, so, your point around making sure there's some some events don't lose sight of the importance of a strong uptown core, but but having some some events in some of those other places is important as well. It could, it could even be done even inside the uptown, uh, Don, even, you know, spread out amongst the uptown rather than just in one one area. So that's kind of what I was referring to is just the, the uptown. I think broadening it even further is great because it brings people through and in. Um, but even in, in, in the uptown, I think you can do uh, some good spreading around. Perfect. Thanks a lot, Glenn. Um, and again, if, we'll come back to you if you have more questions. I know you, you've had a lot of really great uh comments that you've been making to us and we're going to we might circle back to you in a little bit we want to give some other folks a chance to give some other comments as well uh we had uh some interesting comments from kevin darling um i'm not sure any relation your worship no <laughs> uh so uh kevin mentions uh that he thinks that we should create a pedestrian mall like some other cities uh like spark street in ottawa uh, maybe argyle and halifax uh so uh, Kevin, I know you asked another question about charities as well, but maybe could you elaborate on your idea and give the floor here? Thanks, David. Um, I was just, with COVID-19, it's really put a, a strain on local charities as far as their fundraising efforts. And I'm wondering if if we're looking at some of the ways to bring people into the into the downtown or gathering people somehow in, in whatever way we can under this environment, how can we incorporate the charities in this and give them an opportunity to use this also as a fundraising or maybe this is part of the appeal of, of driving people into certain areas that we want them to go to and there's an opportunity to participate with their local charities and take some of that financial strain off the local charities that's that's a good um can i can i make a quick oh, comment yeah, you go right ahead Richard. Yeah, so thanks kevin i'm not sure we will have to circle back and see if we're related to somewhere there so um i have a great great question we 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 recognize uh there's there's uh it's not just uh businesses of all shapes and sizes it's uh you know that I've, I've spoken to a lot of uh, non-profit and charity and and uh organizations that are very concerned about uh um you know uh what the future looks like uh, uh individuals capacity to donate uh um uh so yeah th that's real i i guess i would ask uh phil um and 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 our staff teams to a you know hear your comment can we can we make sure there's table space available can we can we do some things like that is there something we can do phil and david at the night market you know can we have a a table or two or some representation some space each week available to rotating uh, charities 
Um, and then, you know, we've just seen so many innovative ideas, uh, Kevin, in the city on how can we help each other? How could uh, businesses uh, partner with charities uh, to support each other in, in, some, in some fashion as we work through recovery? So those are just a couple of uh, quick and initial thoughts, but certainly would ask our staff to take away your comment. How can we include uh, some space or some involvement or some partnership with uh, uh, with various charities in in these events, I, I like it very much. Yeah, any comments from you? Uh, the, the only thing I had add is uh, uh, Kevin's point is not uh, is he's not the only one. We've heard this before, and I think one of the things we've we've heard this not just in the charities, but for nonprofits and for uh, community based organizations that are are struggling. One of the things that we have learned is that um, some organizations have innovated and uh, and others have not and uh, and uh, it has nothing to do but one's better than the other it's just they they were able to find a way to succeed and one of the important pieces that we're discovering is that exchanging that information is vital so that you know if, if kevin you come up with a really great idea in order to to uh to provide uh, uh an access point for your 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 stakeholders your partners uh, your donors and um, others haven't yet found that. I think the exchange of information is really, really important. And uh, I'm seeing just incredible innovation happening in that uh, nonprofit sector uh, on how how to how to manage this new reality. And uh, I think for those who are, are still struggling, uh, the leaders within those um, those innovators need to kind of share their stories uh, to bring everybody uh, up to speed. Thanks, Phil. Kevin, does that answer your question or your comments? Uh, did you have a follow up that you wanted to ask the mayor, Phil, or are you okay? No, I think I think that's good, and I think you know Phil's point around a forum for the the charitable leaders to share you know new innovative ways because there is still there is still pent up demand out there for people that do want to donate. So I think that it's going to be key that uh, that everybody gets a chance to tap into whatever revenues we can or whatever avenues we can use to do that. Okay, thanks a lot, Kevin. Uh, I don't know if anyone has put, I don't know if she's put her hand up, but, but I would really love to hear from uh, uh, Judith Mackin if she's willing. Uh, she, you know, one, one of the most innovative entrepreneurs, uh, you know, in, in, in the region. And I wondered if I could put her on the spot and maybe tie together Mike Duncan's uh, question as well as a lot a lot of businesses relying on the eight to five eight to four traffic and the eight to five traffic is significantly lower right now certainly uh than than it had been so uh, in in your order there i would love to put uh, judith on the spot if i could just hear her well, sure i think judith are you willing to speak up on your comments uh i've never used this platform before can you hear me we can yes yeah okay good morning everyone uh yeah that is putting me on the spot don but i'm happy to step up <laughs> Thank you, Drew. Uh, i've been scribbling a lot of notes uh i'm just going to really quickly kind of uh jump in with what my first response was in terms of driving people uptown um i think if there's a way to do it we need to provide free parking period um, you know, there's a lot of people that are coming uptown and uh, they're still not quite happy to get into a large group of people. They're traveling, you know, in small groups, but they are coming uptown. We are seeing uh, even in the last week and a half, people are really eager. Just uh, we at Tuck have anybody that buys anything at our store, it doesn't matter whether it's a sofa or a vase, we will pay them $2 or $4, depending how long they've been in the store. It's a small gesture, but it goes a long way. And even though they've already paid for that, they can then take that $2 and maybe they'll go across the street to throw an ax at Wood Axe or go to the art warehouse or something like that. So free parking, I think, is if there's a way that the city can uh, work with uh, people that want to give out vouchers, I think that would be good. The other thing is aligned with what Kevin said. I love the idea of thinking ahead of, um, you know, in, in engaging on waterfront and large events in the future when we're not social distancing. But I think that we always have to be remembering that they shouldn't be paid events. We need to think about those vulnerable pop populations. We need to think about the disadvantaged and whatever we're doing to draw people uptown cannot be elitist in the fact that there's a heavy price ticket on it. But then to Kevin's point, for the people that actually can uh, pay, it would be nice to do a fundraiser, pay what you can so that there's no actual, um, you know, price point on that. 
And then I think the other thing, and, I'll, and then I'll stop talking, is even when we're talking about these traveling picnic tables, um, I think it would be amazing if the city could do a call to businesses and ask each business to sponsor one of those so that that money's not coming out necessarily just from the city budget. I know I would be happy to sponsor one of those. I think it's a great idea. It helps our fellow uh, entrepreneurs, restaurant owners, getting people out, sitting at those, and it promotes arts within the community. Great comments, Judith. Thank you. Um, Mary Darling, I'll turn it over to you first. No, I'd, well, I, I, that's why. I, thank you, Judith, uh, for those those great ideas. I, uh, you already answered. I, I love, I do like the free parking. I think we just have to get innovative and not get caught up in the, we can't afford it and we've got lots of pressures of our own, but you answered uh, with your voucher. So some kind of mechanism, not that I have anything against the, uh, the the working parker, you know, the person, the person that working uptown, but I think uh, to really take that one away and, and figure that out, I think is great. I, I, I absolutely agree completely uh, with your comments on inclusivity and, and, and making sure that you know, folks get to, uh, you know, get to participate and, and, you know, your Lincoln was beautiful to, to pay what you can. And, uh, lastly, I think on, and I'm, I guess I assumed, uh, Phil and David that, uh, that are uh, the picnic table idea. I hadn't thought of the sponsoring. I, I love that as well. Uh, but uh, absolutely, I assumed that that would, that call would go out to local artists. So there's a win-win all around. These are, you know, beautiful, uh, you know, beautiful works of art. Not, not unlike, obviously, uh, Victoria. I think you're on the line. Uh, you, you know, the the salmon run began again yesterday. I mean, these are just uh, stunning, uh, and, but also supporting the local art artists and professional artists, professional professional artists that uh, you know can can do something really really beautiful there. So I, I'd say agree, 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 and let's find a way to to make something happen. Thank you. Uh, Phil, over to you. Any comments from you on Judith's uh, no, just Thank you, Judith, for those comments. I think they're great. And uh, I think uh, we, 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 we are always managing between, um, you know, council feels this. We go and we say, well, we want to put these together and they want it to come out right away. And I think some of the community members do. So that's one of the challenges we have is around, uh, you know, balancing various programs um and then how deep do we go in each one but i really like the idea of sponsorship um you know and, and maybe just food for thought and um, uh, and and judith your comments kind of remind me of this is if we bring people to the community you know the assumption or to these commercial areas is the assumption is that they will they will go right they will go grab a coffee they'll go buy their shoes at the urban shoe myth they'll they'll uh they'll go get something from uh uh, the feel good store or, or whatever else all the different great uh, uh and that's just the uptown but we can obviously uh, other parts of the city but uh you know if we do have that what what expectations are there on the businesses to draw is there is there that kind of next step you know if we bring the volume there is it just going to happen or is there another step that has to happen to then say we got to get them to think about going there and and what who does that and and how does that facilitate it so uh, again i don't know the answer to that but it's something that i do worry about like in terms of active transportation if we brought you know uh, swaths of people through uh, the different commercial zones uh, i would hate it for them just to kind of walk by <laughs> they actually don't grab their coffee they actually don't go up and uh you know enjoy a, a wonderful meal at tondi's or, or italian by night uh, or or go check out some new furniture at tuck and and uh, and all the great stuff there so uh it's something else that 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 i struggle with and it's probably the piece that the city is the least capable of doing uh, you know how do you how do you interact directly you can drive the volume but not necessarily uh right into your doorstep as a business well i think the onus is on each individual to be creative to you know the 2020 word of the year pivot but it, like that is not the city's responsibility it's small business owners it's entrepreneurs it's their responsibility to you know figure out okay we've got a large group of people in our city now the city's been innovative and in driving people there it's it's up to me as a small business to work with people on my street work with social media and make that happen and offer events within the store or within my uh street so don't take the weight of that on your shoulders phil <laughs> yeah thank you, thank you. <laughs> thanks a lot for the wonderful comments uh i'm seeing a lot uh, of other comments and I just want to take one more um, question here before we move on to the next part of the presentation. Uh, I'm seeing a number of comments on marketing the city or marketing that we're open for business or marketing that businesses are open. 
Um, Mary, I'm going to turn this over to you in just a moment, but uh, you mentioned that we do have Victoria Clark on the phone. I'm going to put Victoria on the spot. Um, Victoria, maybe would you mind sharing sort of some of the things that either the city can do or that you're doing as Discover St. John to really push that the city is open for business? And I, I know David Duplessis had a comment on promoting staycations. So, uh, Victoria, I'll put you on the spot for a second. Well, you're absolutely not putting me on the spot. I've been waiting to be engaged <laughs> on this conversation. I saw your hand going up and down, up and down, up and down. Right, right, right. All right. All right well, good morning, everyone. And uh, yes, we are in uh, extraordinary times, and extraordinary times mean extraordinary measures. So, Discover St. John, our mandate is to sell the unique properties of St. John to the markets of highest affinity. And uh, our unique offerings haven't changed, but our market of highest affinity certainly has. So our organization started uh, this pandemic uh, with the messaging that we would not be receiving um, a levy that would be normally generated by hotel room stays. But uh, I'm happy to say that we've, uh, we have advocated with the federal government and have uh, shored up some funding. And so we will be going out with a new marketing campaign um, to start, actually, I should start with phase one. So phase one is that we have been quietly marketing this whole time. Um, we started a paid campaign a few weeks ago that was actually talking to St. Johners about discovering St. John, something we would have never normally done, but we're not in normal times. So you would have seen our uh, marketing that would be inviting you to the west side, to the north end, uh, out to Grand Bay Westfield, or out to Hampton. And it's again, it's about driving people in different areas of our city. Our city is safe. Our businesses are working so hard to create a safe experience. And so we need to be supporting our own local businesses first. And again, I would be remiss if I didn't remark on the work being done by the chamber and then certainly by Uptown St. John. And the work by Uptown St. John was so strong that we were hearing from members saying, why aren't they marketing us? But it's not in their mandate. <laughs> and uh, until today, or until these last few weeks, it wasn't in our mandate either. Um, but it was really important to us that you know we were making sure that we were reminding people of small batch and the zesty lemon, and uh, you know credles as part of the experience that they can have in St. John. While our provincial government is advising us to stay closer to home, uh, but those businesses have taken extraordinary measures to be safe. Um, our next phase, as far as marketing goes is that we are drafting in behind the strategy of the province of New Brunswick. And so as it stands, and everybody knows there's no such thing as a hard deadline or a hard date anymore for anything, but as it stands, uh, we are looking at uh, an organic message starting to be sent uh, to our markets of highest affinity within our province on June the 15th, that's next Monday, this, this coming Monday, and paid advertising uh, on a number of channels uh, throughout New Brunswick, starting on the 26th of June. And because of the federal funding that we've attracted, we have a very dynamic campaign that we're going out for, and, uh, and we'll be able to be in market through to mid-November, which is a great relief because it really is our number one job to be stimulating business in St. John. Um, like always, you know, there are other parts to our business, and uh, um, uh, Glenn uh, mentioned earlier about major events. Of course, I don't need to tell anybody, uh, major events, meetings and conventions, sport tourism is all on hold. Uh, again, we are aligning with our federal and provincial partners. We are advocating as uh, Destination Marketing Associations of Canada for having more clarity on the number of people that can gather. You can imagine if there could be 100 people in Costco, how come there can't be you know, 100 people maybe uh, down on the fundy team? Um, we are working in partnership with, uh, you can see that the salmon run went out yesterday. We're looking for other ways to, uh, to, to leverage vibrancy in Uptown St. John. I'm thrilled to hear you say parking, Judith. Uh, we've been advocating with the city for parking and, uh, and then also beautification. Um, right now, the city looks beautiful because of the tulips the city planted last year. They look extraordinary. They are about to be done. And, and again, we're not saying it's all or nothing. You have to have you know, the, your regular 2020 plan or nothing. We're saying, can we support you or can local businesses support you? And not unlike saying, you know, can we sponsor a picnic table? You know, if we planted uh, flowers out in front of your store, 
could we minimize the work by having you uh, by having you water the plants? And just my last remark, because I can see people's microphones coming back on, um, with regards to the pop-up drawing and programming and animation of space. Uh, we have already sponsored a number of uh, community partners that are going out uh, with programming, and so I'm excited that those messages belong to those organizations, and so I look forward to them uh, uh, starting to promote their programming. And I am working on a feasibility plan around the pop-up drive-in. Um, again, you know, and, and exactly, uh, and again, I was cheering uh, on both Glenn and uh, Judith's remarks because it is about gathering people safely. It is about uh, uh, public safety giving us parameters on how many people can gather and how they can move through the space. We know that we need them to have uh, amenities and uh, the port is a great place for that. And then exactly about accessibility, Judith, you are hitting the bullseye. Uh, we're talking about how to make sure that we are attracting funding so that there are literally no barriers to attend. But things like this are free. And, uh, and so we're trying to make sure that uh, we're leveraging and pulling all the levers for any kind of funding or in-kind support to make these things happen. Uh, thanks for your time. And again, you know, we're not working from home. We're working during a global pandemic. The unknowns uh, outpace uh, everything else. But uh, I feel real positivity. Um, the number one thing for me is that we need together to be sharing positive messaging about how our businesses are open safely and that people can uh, move throughout the city and move throughout our businesses safely. Thank you. Okay, thanks a lot, Victoria. Tons of really great comments there. Um, Your Worship, I, I'm just gonna leave the final note for you. It's um, the, the question is, you know, th there's an opportunity here for the city to promote its value proposition. Uh, you along with Victoria have been community boosters for years. Um, what what's sort of the unique pitch that we can be sharing with the rest of New Brunswick and the rest of Canada right now about our city? Yeah, I think, uh, well, first of all, I just want to say thank you uh, to Victoria. There's many leaders again on the call today. Thank you, Victoria, for everything you've done, you and your team. Uh, um, uh, you know, you've really focused on what you can control for now. And, uh, you know, because uh, I think we can all get caught up in the sorrow of what we may have lost. But uh, so thank you for Thank you for your remarks. Um, while you were chatting, I mean, I just, uh, and again, I, I just was writing a couple of notes and I just like, you know, how do, how do we, how do we fall, fall in love again? We all love probably every, everybody on this call loves this city and uh, rediscovering. And that's, you know, all the things you're sharing, Victoria, your, your videos uh, that you've shared, uh, uh, you know, I, I, I've never eaten so much dulse. Uh, uh, you know, you, you've done such an amazing job of, of saying, you know, there are adventures there there are things to see there are things that we 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 don't know about right here in our city do folks know that there's a uh, remnants of the great fire in king square go go try to find it and when you find it there's free parking tokens beside it for you you know uh so i i, I guess what i would say in summary david is we've got such innovative you know, uh, and driven entrepreneurs and, and, and leaders and thinkers and whether it be all the economic agencies, all the other groups we've mentioned today, how do we come out of this call today um, and stick uh, and, and have a rapid deployment, get the idea, flush it out, uh, flush it out, uh, go and implement it, try it, measure how did it go, do, do another one. And, and Phil, it's not a critique. It's just I know that, you know, bureaucracy sometimes can be, you uh, can can get slow, so I just uh, I'm I'm curious to to have uh, have us reflect over the next day or two. You're already doing it, but how do we have that rapid deployment team take these ideas uh, and and go implement them and uh, get people out and and feeling great and rediscovering their city and their region again? Uh, so I'll stop there. Thank you. Okay, uh, that's a good segue uh, into sort of our next section, which I know our participants are eager to hear about. Um, I'm going to turn things back over to Phil because um, we want to talk about open streets. And if you're talking about nimbleness, this was something that council directed staff to survey the entire city with only a few days notice. Uh, and we did that and had a fantastic response. Uh, Phil, I'll turn it over to you if you wouldn't mind sharing sort of what we've heard so far. Sure. Thank you. And I'll, I'll go through this quite quickly. Um, uh, listen, we, we, uh, one thing I want to mention is 
when it comes to recovery, each community is unique. So what inevitably happens in New Brunswick, but in everywhere else is to say, I heard Moncton's doing this and we're not, and therefore we are behind. That's a, that's a real wrong way of looking at it. What works for Moncton might not work for us. Um, and I would really hate for recovery to be seen as, well, Phil Willett really likes uh, open streets. So he, he, he went ahead and uh, got his team together and, uh, and now they're doing it and convinced council. That's not what we want to do. And for open streets, some communities have done it and some have not. It is not universal. So um, what we've done is we've canvassed and uh, we've tried to seek that input for it. And we think it's the right thing to do. I wouldn't I wouldn't call it uh, 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 overly ambitious or over time consuming. Uh, we opened it up on a on a Monday and I think it closed on a Sunday. Uh, we received over 2,000 responses, which is unbelievable, which is even more unbelievable is at the end of every survey, you've probably all filled out. There's like this comment box, like, do you got anything else that you'd like to share? And uh, literally, uh, for people who have worked on surveys, nobody usually submits anything in that box. Uh, 500 people submitted ideas on recovery in that little box in this uh, of, of people who've, who've participated. So I think we have a real strong showing here of what it is. And also some education on what open streets it what is it and what is it not so i think a lot of people think of it as a you know a, a moonlight bazaar or a, a big event and you close down the street and that's just one of the facets of open streets uh that are considered so here you have you have an image of of more of a of a market environment where the sidewalk the pedestrian right away is still there there's a the street is closed but it's for pedestrians so it kind of uh cr creates this kind of um, um, market vibe uh, while supporting the businesses on the end. So uh, again, just an idea. So David, let's uh, let's go through these slides here. Uh, so this is the the res the respondents. Uh, uh, Eighteen percent of those who responded were not from St. John, which is great. I think uh, the idea that the region sees St. John's economic recovery as an important piece of of our broader regional recovery, I think, is indicative of what what uh, what St. John does for the entire region, and uh, I think that's an important uh, facet. Um, next slide. So uh, I'm going to start sharing some of the, the feedback. Now, the first ones are on the residents. There was two kind of streams to the survey. One was for residents and one was for businesses. So this is the resident feedback. And, um, you know, uh, residents were very supportive of street openings uh, um, uh, all summer. Uh, and then as you kind of go down the limitation of it, uh, of, of what type of street closure that is, uh, they, they become a little bit less supportive. Uh, of it, so uh, they're kind of a high high interest in in street closure opportunities. And um, um, next slide. Uh, so this was a really important finding that we believe we found that uh, eighty five percent of individuals are more inclined to visit a restaurant or a store today uh, with an outdoor space. Um, and uh, you know, I'm sure some of you on the line probably already know that, um, but uh, that's pretty pronounced. And I don't know if that will change over time. I, I hope it does, but uh, that does point to the importance of, of um, uh, for the restaurant industry at least, that people want to grab something, but also want the space to do it. But they will interact with that space being provided by that business. This is uh, something else that uh, we've heard uh, a lot when we talk about any sort of street closures, we do hear that uh, some businesses are fearful of what it means for their business in terms of the drive in traffic. Um, and some businesses are different than others, but we'd asked uh, residents, you know, uh, what what distance are you willing to, to walk? So basically around 10 minutes is where the kind of highest frequency of or comfort is and then it starts dropping down so maybe that's the threshold is that kind of 10 minute walk anything more than that people are going to start kind of rolling their eyes and saying this is too far i might not do it uh, i suspect there's a lot more to these than uh, than this this graph uh, as uh, those business owners uh, uh, know their customers very well and uh, know the intricacies of it um, but uh, listen, this is what uh, those uh, those over 2000 uh, responses uh, uh, had provided. So that's just an idea. What we've we've done here is uh, we 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 encase the kind of restaurant district of the Central Peninsula. And uh, that's in red. And we said, what is about a 10 minute walk 
from there. So that's in green. So you can kind of see um, the, the the willingness that people would have to walk from, from that location. Um, so uh, just for, for an idea, we could do that. Obviously, we could do the same thing for a variety of different commercial districts across the city. Next slide. Okay, Play Streets. I just want to share a little bit on Play Streets. Uh, this is uh, uh, these concepts or terms might just be a little bit nebulous for some and say, what is this all about? So in bigger cities, Play Streets have become a really important facet because parks have been closed. And um, what it's been done now, the, the term can be used for any sort of wellness occurring on the street, which could be running, walking, biking, uh, kind of active transportation. But um, several communities, especially in the COVID-19 world that we're in, have used it basically for play for families uh, and kids and rediscovered, uh, bring, they closed down the street so that kids can play there versus the playgrounds and um, uh, different communities have tested out different ways of doing it. Um, but uh, it certainly works at the neighborhood level, but it can work in a commercial district area as well, bringing in those families. Uh, what exactly and how it's animated all up for discussion. Uh, you know, actually, when we put this together, David and I talked, it's like, uh, you know, I was uh, I was born in the early 80s, but that was certainly in 80s. When I think of the 80s, I think of like, you know, let's get the, the rusty hockey net and let's go play on the street. And you see less of that in, in the kind of the densely populated residential areas because there's so much traffic. But, uh, you know, that's the type, type of idea that you would kind of recreate that vibe. Again, we'd have to do it while social distancing and the rest, but uh, it, is a, it is an opportunity that we, uh, we, we have. Next slide. Um, so uh, there's a lot of interest in this. Uh, I think there's still some socialization of this idea. I don't know if everybody kind of gets it right away when they hear play streets, maybe I'm wrong, but uh, there's uh, quite a bit of interest uh, uh, in it. You know, over, over 50% of respondents felt like it was something they could, they could get behind. Uh, so there's a, another a facet of uh, street closures to consider. So business responses, we, of those 2000, there's 83 businesses, 92% of them were in the uptown. And uh, some of the findings that I'm about to share with you were also quite interesting. Just a, a breakdown of, uh, of uh, the main areas, you know, restaurants uh, were the, the largest, although uh, in, in the larger facet, it's not the only one. Accommodations was quite large, uh, professional clinic services, and you're getting into uh, some kind of uh, other uh, related uh, fields, including uh, cultural entertainment and, and transportation. So this is uh, this is the the slide that I think uh, is uh, is probably one of the most interesting from my perspective. The there's a lot going on in this slide, but uh, red is a uh, is approval, right? Um, and uh, sixty percent of businesses surveyed said they are extremely or very supportive of some form of open street. So that doesn't give us a carte blanche to do everything. I'd also note that that kind of teal color um, is opposition. So I've mentioned this in the past. No, no street closure I've ever done has been flawless. There's always a good, uh, good percentage of of people that dislike it, that say it's harmful, and that it is it is uh, it is disruptive to uh, their business or and or their their the residential dwelling. So um, that's something to think about here. And um, you can see some industries have a higher percentage of support than others, but um, you know it's 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 there. Uh, in terms of support. Uh, is there another slide on this, David, before we get to questions? Okay, just before I end, uh, and I've been saying this, uh, and, uh, David assembled this data very quickly uh, after it closed on Sunday. So uh, David, uh, thank you for that. But um, uh, one thing that this data is concluding from a staff perspective is that there is sufficient evidence from the survey to indicate that some level of city initiated street closures should happen this summer. We should propose it. We should. You know, from a staff perspective, I think council should consider it and we should pursue it. We should see if it works. Uh, we'll have to determine exactly where. The, one of the benefits that we had is we geo-tracked every single per respondents. So we can kind of determine where the hotspots are of, of support and then we can go from there. So I think there will be a recommendation for street closures. Uh, what, what exactly and where? I think there's clarity that the weekend seems to be uh, a higher volume of support, both in terms of the residents and the businesses. Um, and that um, uh, that the Central Peninsula is another location that has a high interest 
as well, uh, specifically. So, um, you know, with that, I think that's probably uh, generally the type of recommendation that might come forward. More details to come. Um, let's uh, uh, let's go to the next question there. So uh, <clears throat> this is sort of the first question, Phil. We just wanted to get a general tenor. We, we asked this question in the survey uh, to all the businesses. So we have really good feedback from all the business community who took the survey. We're just trying to get a sense of the folks on the call. Um, Mary Darling, uh, I just want to put you on the spot for a moment. Um, you live uptown now. Um, obviously, we're looking at the idea of street closures all over the city. Weekend options was certainly one that came out very heavily in support, both from uh, individuals who took the survey as well as businesses. Can you just give us some general comments that you have based on the Phil's presentation? I think the mayor just stepped out there, David. I'm not sure if you see his video. Um, you might you have a lot going on on your screen, so <laughs> yeah, he just stepped out shortly. So maybe we just do the question. We do the question for now and uh, sure, yeah. uh, verifies or, or kind of uh, uh, the feedback that we got in the survey. Okay, so let's see here. Uh, okay, so folks are still taking that poll. So um, the first question that we have for everybody. Uh, and we'd like you to, if you could type this in into either Q and A or into the chat. Um, but what streets in St. John do you think are ideal candidates for open streets or play streets? So, and you can wear your business hat if you like, or you could wear just your resident hat. Um, but we're just looking for you to start. Um, give us some feedback. Obviously, we've we've heard some feedback. We had 500 comments in the survey. With many people had some recommendations on what streets we should consider. Um, but we're just going to open that up to everybody right now. So, and as you're doing that now, I'm going to maybe circle back to the mayor. Um, so, your worship, there's been a lot of discussion on street closures or open streets, as we're calling them, play streets. Um, just want to go to, for your comments first on the presentation we just heard. Yeah, well, look, I, I thought um, I thought the participants, um, the, the participation was fantastic. Uh, um, um, it was interesting to see uh, the number of business participants. Uh, um, I'm not surprised. I mean, I've been being tagged in uh, ideas, as you mentioned, Phil, from Halifax to Vancouver to Moncton to, uh, um, you know, so I know this topic is of interest to people. It's of interest to folks who uh, 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 from an active transportation lens. Uh, I just want to make sure that we're working with uh, the chamber with Uptown St. John and we're finding that balance. Uh, and again, uh, I, I would lean, you know, I would lean more to, um, you know, Friday, Friday nights, uh, Saturday nights, that, that that's just my own personal view. Uh, but but certainly look to to get some as much consensus as possible with Uptown St. John, uh, the chamber, and then let's go try some things. I was trying to type, I couldn't type fast enough. Uh, you know, to me, Water King, Prince William, you know, they're all prime. Uh, and then how do we how do we you know do something for example where we've got an active construction project on Canterbury Street. Uh, so there's already a little bit of a disruption there. So how do we use the rest of Canterbury Street that uh, um, that we do something really, you know, that's a spot where you could do, an, you know, uh, an open street, if you will, for uh, a prolonged period where, you know, you could do something very creative to test it to to support those businesses on that block where there's already a bit of a street interruption. So I, I think we should uh, I think we should do something. Uh, I'm not surprised by the feedback, and I'd like to find balance with uh, Uptown and uh, St. John and Chamber and the business owners, so that uh, we're we're um, we're not jumping into something that that uh, impacts the very thing we're trying to achieve. In my mind, thanks, Your Worship. Uh, so we have the results of the poll. Uh, so uh, no one on the call is saying they think a street closure of any type would have sort of a negative impact on their business. Um, the majority would say that there'd be, be no impact. Uh, I would suspect a lot of those businesses would just be uh, Monday to Friday, nine to fives. And if we're looking at weekends, it might not have any impact on those businesses as well. And then a number are saying that it would have a positive impact. So this sort of reflects some of what we've been seeing in the survey. Um, but David, and sorry, I, I, sorry to interrupt, but if I'm reading that correctly, 50% um, didn't answer. So I'm, I'm, right. I'm curious if the any of the 50% want to send a note to feedback, uh, the feedback email, or is it just you don't know? Uh, just that's a pretty large number that didn't answer. But anyway, I know we have 2,000 respondents. Uh, but uh, it's uh, uh, anyway, just this one, I think we should 
we've already had some very successful projects. Uh, I think it can really contribute to being part of the answer. Uh, let's let's uh, let's try something, but uh, make sure we're we're not impacting those businesses. That's just my opinion. Thank you. Absolutely. Uh, so we're getting some comments now. I think uh, we're seeing some of the usuals: Canterbury Street, Prince William, Water Street, uh, Princess Street. Uh, Phil, any comments from you on sort of uh, what we're looking for in streets? Uh, maybe some streets outside the Uptown Core. Yeah, I, I think we uh, there's some some. Um, usual suspects of uh, potential street closures that we've heard a lot about. And um, listen, I'm not gonna force anything that doesn't have to happen, but you know, we, we've we heard often around street closures that this is about restaurants and this is about the uptown. And uh, I think that's a, a large portion of it, but it's not exclusively that. Uh, it's about a lot more than that. And um, you know, one of the questions that, that I have, and we, you know, please send me your feedback is around, what can work around those commercial corridors in the east, the north, and the west? And I think it's hard to envision um, because, um, and maybe I don't have the history uh, either. And that's maybe the question, what has worked? What does draw a large population, um, uh, again, while respecting social distancing and the mandatory orders, in those other commercial nodes that could work? And again, focusing on that main street type of business, that small and medium sized business, which statistically is the businesses that have been impacted the most by COVID-19, not uh, again, not exclusively. There's others that have as well, certainly. But um, how would we go about doing that? You know, I think a lot of people can envision Canterbury being closed because Canterbury has been closed. Uh, I have a hard time thinking about how would you close down Lancaster? How would you interact with open streets on a on a Lancaster on a on a portion of Rossay Avenue, on a, a Lower West Side, on uh, Fairville. And uh, uh, again, there is some kind of box stores there as well, which might start falling outside of that kind of that kind of target audience. But it's nevertheless something that I do question. And uh, I don't know if there is a right answer to it. Uh, I do think that if you if you do some street, uh, uh, some open streets in the Central Peninsula, will give other regions of the city an idea and they could also come forward and say hey i think i, I think this could work so um you know any thoughts on that on the other areas outside of the uptown is also very much welcomed uh, as we uh, as we want to make sure that we expand our recovery programming to across the city into our various uh, businesses okay yeah, thanks phil uh, so um yeah to phil's point if any of you have some ideas of specific streets outside the uptown as well that you think would be ideal for open streets or play streets please sort of take those in the q a or send an email to feedback at st john at ca um, i just want to go to the audience for a moment uh mike duncan i want to put you on the spot if that's okay you've had some great comments um related to businesses uptown and street closures and access to patio space i'm wondering if you could just comment uh if it's okay with you on some of your thoughts there yeah sure yeah Yep, we can hear you. Morning, Mike. Okay, great. Yeah, thanks for, thanks for doing this. This is uh, very helpful for us all just kind of struggling to face this new reality. Um, yeah, so so some of the thoughts that that I've been hearing uh, through some of the comments is just, uh, you know, for an eight to five business, it is, uh, it is some unique challenges that we face compared to um, Sometimes the, the evening can be a more vibrant, uh, easier accessed environment. Uh, so, yeah, for us, and, and I mean, for, you know, for my specific business, which, which you know, we have an interest in all of the uptown thriving because then, you know, it, it lifts us all up for sure. Um, but we, you know, we rely on high traffic and, uh, and it's pretty, pretty tricky at the moment. Uh, and a big, a, a huge piece of our business is was tourism, which we didn't <clears throat> ever factor in when we opened Rogue. Um, we just, you know, saw it as a local cafe. But um, you know, through the initiatives of like, like Discover St. John, and and uh, over the last three years, the summer has been, you know, that that's when we we make the hay, and uh, the winters are are brutal for. Pretty much any uptown business, <laughs> I would say. Um, so, so this, you know, facing what we're facing now, is uh, is is a real big challenge. And 
so sometimes for for something like a street closure uh you know we're all we're all for it because we think that it'll just increase the vibrancy of all of uptown um but we also have to fix the reality that if um if prince william or canterbury's closed are we're gonna come to our business or are they gonna service the ones closer um so maybe maybe a thought for that is if we businesses that aren't on the the closed streets could have access to uh, like a parking space patio uh which i think also increases the the vibe of the uptown um everybody doesn't have to squish into one street or two streets um maybe it's, it's spread around a bit and you really have a, a patio atmosphere in the whole the whole uh, business district um so yeah just just you know maybe some options to alleviate the the fees or or uh maybe have you know a set of regulations that are that are kind of more relaxed for, for us to, to open one when we never thought we would open one okay thanks mike great comments uh phil i'll turn that over to you first like i said some interesting things i know we've talked about those in-house yeah, that's a, that's a great question. And, you know, I think, uh, I think we can do better to expedite the approval process for, for the, especially in this era, in this, uh, this era of COVID-19. And um, I think, um, I think we have a multitude of different ideas that are being generated. One is event based, one is patio based, one is more permanent street closure based. And how we can can drive the volume and facilitate the turnaround time, I think, is is really important. And we are making steps. We are taking steps to do that. Um, and uh, we will be rolling out some new application forms. And internally, um, one thing that we did notice is that people are just depending on who they talk to, uh, they might get a different turnaround time on street closure. So um, we need to kind of simplify and streamline that for anybody. Uh, who's uh, supportive of uh, of that or needs that uh, to to drive their business? Mayor Darling, any comments? Yeah, well, I think I think um, I know I know Mike uh, and Vanessa. I, I live <laughs> I live in their alley, uh, not in their alley, close to their alley, um, and uh, I've watched them. Uh, you know, again, I, I I'm in I'm in I'm inspired by you know, small business owners and how hard they work and the, the you know, the pivot and uh, Mike and Vanessa packing, delivering coffees out. And I think what we've just heard is, uh, is uh, the reality of, um, you know, you can pivot and you can try to pivot and you can keep trying to pivot, but uh, you know, how, how do we uh, support what's our role? Uh, each of us have to to play our roles, and I'm thinking of Judith's comment. You know, like uh, we've got to be careful to to manage expectations here as well. But what can we do? You know, uh, you know, be faster in approvals. Uh, be creative with a bit of uh, you know investment here to to increase some vibrancy. I, you know, while you were chatting, Mike, I you know I wrote down back to to. Um, uh, uh, Victoria's comments, a whole series of, uh, of, uh, day tripping adventures so that I, you know, I go to the nature park. I go to see a beach I've never been to. I go to see a war memorial. I go to see and touch Martello tower. I go to road coffee to have a coffee. And then I go to Italian by night. And then I go to talk to buy a vase and I, or a couch. I like, I don't know. I just, how do we get as creative as possible so that, that, you know, as many, as many of us us are, are rediscovering our city, the shops within our city and supporting. I don't have all the answers. I feel the urgency. Uh, I feel the pain of, um, of uh, you know, what a lot of our, our business owners are going through. So, uh, you know, Phil and David and to the rest of the city team, we need to make sure we're not the problem. Uh, we're, we're, uh, we're, we're quick and nimble and faster than we've ever been. And, uh, and we're part of the solution. And uh, each, 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 each of us on this call needs to be part of the solution. Thank you, Mayor Darling. Um, Phil, I just want to turn over to you for a, a sort of a comment or question. We've been getting a number of comments on some of the concerns that businesses have, uh, even including on, on the call. I'm seeing in the QA, some folks are concerned if we close certain streets, uh, they wouldn't be able to, you know, have deliveries or walk-ins. Um, so can you talk a little bit about uh, sort of our city's awareness of making sure that businesses could have access to deliveries if we did close a street or maybe some of the temporary parking options we're looking at? 
Yeah, no, it's a it's a great uh, you know one of the one of the options that we have when we talk about open streets is that it's not a full closed street and you basically close half of the street. So some people call that like an expanded sidewalk or uh, and it doesn't necessarily have to be patio space. So that is one option. Um, you know, we we face that when we we close a street with a, with a residential parking lot in it. So you know, if there's a, a certain number and you can't, you know, if there's two parking spots, maybe that's easy to kind of negotiate and say, hey, could you guys just stay home, <laughs> not drive around or not drive in, and we'll we'll put those big barricades. But when you got a parking spot of you know ten or more, it becomes really complicated to tell people that they they can't actually access it or park elsewhere. The city can offer temporary parking for them at a, at a at a free rate or something like that in order to support that. But you know those are one offs, and as you deal with more residential tenants, it's it's difficult. And for the drive-in traffic, I think that is a, a piece that we'll have to to know um, from businesses is how impactful that will be. Like we did get those stats that you know people are willing to walk ten minutes, but. You know, uh, Judith, uh, uh, Judith, I'm just going to pick on Judith. Judith might say, you know, that's great that the average says that. But for my customers, uh, if they can't park right in front, if they can't park on Prince William, um, they're not coming. Uh, and, uh, you know, I don't know if that is the case. And I'm, I'm kind of putting words in your mouth, Judith. But, you know, I think that's the thing that we have to listen to. And in any street closure that we deal with, we end up managing those types of concerns. And I have to I've, I've told this to the mayor and council. Uh, because they are the ones that inevitably get these is that we will implement it. We will say it's it's generally a good idea and we'll do everything we can to mitigate it. But literally the mayor will get all the negative calls um, among the other councillors on, you know, I can't, I can't, I can't get out of my car. My car is stuck. It's locked now and I can't get out for the evening. And it is challenging to, to manage that. So I think part of street closures is to build the expectation that, um, uh, there are going to be some um, some concessions that people will have to live with as it results to the benefit of, of street closures. Okay, thanks a lot, Phil. And uh, Judith, uh, she responded that her customers do walk. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, folks, thanks so much for participating in this first virtual town hall with businesses. We really appreciate uh, taking time out of your busy schedules uh, to meet with us and share your feedback, your concerns. Again, uh, we're going to have uh, this uh, virtual town hall stream to the city's YouTube channel. We'll have the presentation online. We'll email you all a link. Uh, and again, any additional comments you have, there'll just be a really quick 30 second survey after this, but you can also email feedback at St. Uh, Mayor Darling, I'm gonna give you the last word. Yeah, just wanna say thank you again. Um, uh, thank you again to everyone who participated. Uh, and, um, uh, you know, we're, we, we're, we're in this together. It's easy to say, uh, but we are really leaning on each other. I'd certainly like to see us, uh, uh, acting, um, uh, faster than, than we ever have, uh, being part of the solution, uh, within the role the city should play, uh, leaning on partners. Um, I was just thinking in that last, uh, uh, closing conversation on open streets so around the role of Uptown, St. John, the Chamber. What is that decision making uh, matrix that we can quickly put in place so that we, you know, we're going down and making sure that we've consulted and, uh, but also it's that, you know, not, not uh, paralysis by analysis as well. So I think, uh, you know, it's real, it's urgent to get uh, uh, folks back out and, um, and shopping and supporting and feeling, feeling better. I think folks are feeling a bit anxious. And uh, we all play a role in that, every one of us on this call today. And uh, we're, we're going to keep working hard for uh, economic, uh, cultural, social uh, recovery. We have an amazing city that is kind and generous. And it's uh, um, uh, thank you very much again, everyone, for coming out today. And thank you to you, David and Phil, for putting everything together. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day. And we look Have forward to working with you again soon. Take care.